Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of radar systems. Today's topic is FMCW radar. FMCW is Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave Radar. In this video, I am going to talk about the theory of operation and the block diagram of FMCW radar. Let us begin. To start with, let us just revise what is CW radar. See, we have already studied about the pulse radar. Pulse radar transmits pulses while continuous wave radar, this type of radar systems emit electromagnetic radiations at all the times. CW radar can measure instantaneous rate of change of the target range and this is done by a direct measurement of Doppler shift of the received signal. Continuous wave radar that is based on the principle of the Doppler shift. And what is Doppler shift? It is a change in the frequency of electromagnetic wave caused by the motion of transmitter or target or both. Both the transmitter and target may move. So the radar which operates with continuous signal for detecting moving targets Moving targets means the non-stationary targets that is known as a continuous wave radar or simply the CW radar. CW Doppler radar, it gives accurate measurements of the relative velocities and in sometimes in some of the applications, the requirement or the information related to the velocity is very much important in comparison to the actual range. Now, let us talk about the frequency modulated CW radar. See, the transmitter in CW radar that is not modulated, it means it can neither provide range of the target nor sense which particular cycle of oscillation is being received at any instant of time. And this was the major drawback which can be eliminated if frequency modulation is being done for the transmitted signal. At the same time, this FM modulated CW radar, if the frequency modulation is being done, it also increases the bandwidth. So if continuous wave Doppler radar uses frequency modulation, then the type of radar is known as a FMCW Doppler radar or simply FMCW radar. In the frequency modulated CW radar, the transmitter frequency is changed as a function of time in a known manner. The pattern is known. And the major applications are as all altimeter on board aircraft, which is used to measure the height above the ground. And the spectrum of a continuous wave radar which is being used in this particular case that can be broadened by the application of the modulation. So FMCW radar it is a widely used technique and it is used to broaden the spectrum of continuous wave radar and the types of modulations which can be used that may be amplitude, frequency or phase and Example of the amplitude modulation, its example is what? That is the pulsed radar. So here when we are talking about the FMCW radar, the simplest way to modulate the wave is to linearly increase the frequency. It means the transmitted frequency will change at a constant rate. Here you can see in this particular waveform, on the x-axis time is being taken, on the y-axis frequency is being taken. Here F1 and F2, F1 is the minimum frequency, minimum and F2 is the maximum frequency over here. This curve which is being shown by a red line that is the transmitted frequency and the green one represents the received frequency. Delta F is the change in the frequency, delta F is what? This difference between the transmitted and the received one and delta t is the time interval time difference right so the difference in the time what happens over here as i have already told you this is a widely used technique which is used to broaden the spectrum of continuous wave radar by using frequency modulation so here the transit time is proportional to the difference in frequency 
between the echo signal and the transmitted signal right and the greater the transmitter frequency deviation in a particular time interval the more accurate the measurement of transit time and greater will be the transmitted spectrum so if you are if we are capable to measure the frequency of return signal then the time delay between the transmission and reception can be measured and it means range can be determined in advance so as i have told you that this is the simplest way and you have already studied if we say that delta f is the difference between the transmitted and the received frequency then we can write what is delta f that is f2 minus f1 at the same time this difference in frequency it is directly proportional to the time delay means delta f is directly proportional to the delta t delta t is what it is the time which the radar signals take to reach the target and return and we have already studied the radar range equation so from there we can write down r is what range is what c into delta t upon 2 and time delay we can also calculate time delay means delta t this is what capital t into delta f upon f2 minus f1 f2 is the maximum frequency f1 is the minimum frequency t is the time period which is required to sweep from f1 to f2 so that is the time period so this is how you can calculate delta t right so we can combine these e these equations means you can substitute the value of delta t from equation number 2 into equation number 1 and you can derive the various parameters at the same time you are also aware with one term which is the unambiguous range so r n ambiguous range this is what this is c into t upon 2 just try to revise the formula means the system it is not capable to discriminate the target beyond this particular range and as fmcw radar it generally used for radar altimeters in the case of the aircrafts so it is considered that the relative velocity of earth and aircraft is not equal to zero it means there will be the doppler shift and that doppler shift provides a measure of the relative velocity so accordingly the beat frequency the rate of change of frequency you can calculate and the beat frequency beat frequency is denoted by fb which actually it is corresponding to the range so the beat frequency it could be written as 4 times r fm delta f upon c you must remember the formula right and 1 upon t is what that is fm fm is nothing but 1 upon t so you must remember this formula also at the same time r minimum if you are going to calculate the minimum range then r minimum it will be what c upon 8 delta f so you must remember this particular formula as well right so fmcw systems these are used as the radar altimeters which is the very important application and you must remember it and when we are talking about a continuous wave system then you must remember that the duty cycle duty cycle is equal to 1 or you can say that the peak power is same as the average power peak power that is equal to the average power that is why the duty cycle is 1 while in the case of the pulse system the peak power is many times greater than the average power so this is about the basics to the frequency modulated cw radar now let us draw and discuss the block diagram of a fm cw radar you can see in this particular block diagram the separate antennas the transmitting antenna and the receiving antennas are used transmitting antenna is used for the transmission of the pulses and the received antenna is used for the reception 
here if we talk about the transmitter section here you can see fm transmitter frequency modulator and sawtooth generator so the frequency modulated continuous wave radar fmcw radar that is capable of measuring the relative velocity and range of the target depending upon the bandwidth of the signal means the two functions is just going to perform calculation of relative velocity and range of the target and the time taken by the transmitted signal to reach the receiver and the return back to the transmitter that particular time is being calculated so in the transmitting section the transmitter uh, signal you can see that is the frequency modulated by a frequency modulator and the modulated signal is propagated to the receiver right which is being reflected uh, over here at the same time the reflected signal which is being reflected from the target that is also going to be received so here you can observe that in the receiving section the frequency modulated signal is mixed with a high bandwidth signal inside the mixer and the output of a mixer you can see uh, the output of a mixer it is a signal which is having a large bandwidth then this particular signal is amplified and applied to the limiter circuit the limiter circuit removes the unwanted frequency components this is capable to remove the unwanted frequency component and then the signal is demodulated and applied to the indicator which actually provides the location of the target and the location of the target that is decided by com comparing the signal value with the predefined threshold value and you are aware with the threshold value how to set it so if the value of signal that is greater than the threshold value it is decided that the target is present at a certain distance if the value of a signal is less than threshold value it means noise is present so depending upon the comparison with the threshold and um, and the signal whatever the value we are getting so depending upon these two values the presence of target is being identified whether the target is present or the noise is being present over there so this is how you can explain the function of each and every unit over here the function which i have explained to you that is being uh, like summarized in this particular table thank you so much for watching this video